Hello, and welcome to Rock Your Block. I'm your host, Tia Young. We are welcoming to our studio today, Mr. Kevin Halestock, CEO for Web Immerse, located in Rockville, Maryland. Kevin, welcome to Rock Your Block. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing well. Good. Doing How well. was that traffic? Uh, there wasn't much, which I was glad to see. Oh, good. That's very good. <laughs> well, let's get started. Um, how did you become a webmaster and a, uh, a designer? You know, tell us a little bit about your background and how you started Web Immerse. Okay. I co-founded Web Immerse pretty early in my professional career, like a year and a half outside of college. Um, I was an applied arts major, uh, studied design, and got a degree in architecture. Mm -hmm. um, and I was working at a firm, a small firm, that gave me experience, uh, some of which was management, and I could see how a small business ticked. I was taking classes and uh, eventually took exams related to becoming a certified internet webmaster, designer, studying e-commerce concepts and whatnot, and also became an um, internet specialist, as you mentioned. And it was sort of, what's, what's next? My family would always ask me that. And it was an exciting time. Uh, 2001, you could consider it sort of post-dot-com bubble. Right. Um, but you know, the internet was coming into its own. Uh, it allowed businesses to start easily mm -hmm. with a you know, few resources or expand uh, because of what was available on the web. And so it was fun to start a company that helped them do that right. by uh, designing websites, applications mm -hmm. uh, that did that work for them. Are you a native Washingtonian? Or? I am. Oh, OK, am. good. I was born in Washington, DC. Uh -huh. Grew up mainly in Rockville, Maryland. Uh -huh. uh, also went to high school in DC. Right. Well, I got to ask this. When did you get that first computer? I want to find out how <laughs> long have you actually had uh, a love for you know computers and technology. Yeah, yeah. It was probably using the family computer. Uh -huh. I, I tend to remember the games, the Atari system, and things like that. The Nintendo uh, okay. more vividly. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember having a Commodore uh, as right. well. Did you take them apart and put them back together? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I, you know, I, I tinkered. Uh, most will call it breaking stuff, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I tinkered for sure. Uh, and in high school was the first point that I really started playing with web websites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well, Kevin, you are uh, the CEO of Web Immerse, uh, and it is, as we said earlier, web development, and it uh, deals with advanced programming. Exactly what does that mean? Because I am not techie. <laughs> I mean, I can type my name, but as we'll later talk about uh, a little later, I'm just really green. Yeah. When it comes to technology. So basically, we design and develop websites, which mm -hmm. we, you know, most of us use every day or every week. Mm -hmm. um, we also do advanced programming, which means that we write computer software. It may happen to run on the web, but it's to automate tasks or accomplish mm -hmm. more complex things. But you can think about it just like your word processing software. Right. Mm -hmm. It's meant to accomplish things. Um, it's all about how a company is presenting itself mm -hmm. on the web mm -hmm. most of the time or accomplishing office tasks. So just to show you how ancient I am, I remember a uh, hundred years ago when I was in college, um, <laughs> we t we took something called COBOL and something called Fortran. Uh -huh, Is that uh, you took ancient? That? I took it and I got put out of class because whatever program I wrote for, I think it was, I think it was Fortran. I totally destroyed the computer because whatever I wrote, it was a link in there, and it just kept. Well, some people it just try to do on. that, <laughs> and I ended up getting put out of class. And I just wondered, is that language still used, or is that a, a dinosaur? Well, there, it's always changing. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. You know, the, once you know the basics, though, you mm -hmm. can apply those to other languages. I mean, there's several under the sun, A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, so I dropped that, the course, so. <laughs> That's <laughs> um, I know that you assist uh, companies and organizations to, uh, to better manage and to present their information more appropriately, but how does that really happen? How do you really do that? Yeah, it's really about um, getting to the bottom of how a company wants to project themselves to their audience, mm -hmm. uh, the type of customers that they want to attract, and the best way to uh, message that audience. So you, do you go into the, the, the company and uh, do you have a list of, of things that 
you know, they respond to it. How do you, how do, you do that? Yeah, in the design process, we begin, for instance, most times with an assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a bunch of basic questions mm -hmm. um, about the business itself. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as I was mentioning, the audience that they actually want to connect with. Right. And then we can work with them in a process of determining you know, what images, what imagery, how that comes together in a design right. that presents them in, in the light that they want to be presented. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, for the site or uh, thing, other thing that they're developing. Well, when you go into an organization and let's say they, they really think they're doing a pretty good job and, and, you know, you have to look at everything, you do the assessments and you see, you know, they're going all about it wrong. How do you, how do you break that? Uh, out to them without, without without them getting mad. Yeah, it's a, it's a case by case basis. <laughs> yeah. But the touchy? good news is, yeah, you have to be gentle with other people's work. Yeah. Um, but the good news is that usually when people are at the point that mm -hmm. they're procuring our services, they're open to that feedback and they're open to, in some cases, starting from scratch in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some things that can't change like uh, or don't change, right. um, but there's usually a good leeway to uh, start from close to scratch right. or a good starting point. And so they pretty much take your uh, recommendations and... Yeah, and, hopefully and if they're on. sitting down with you and they brought you to the table, mm -hmm. you know, they're a candidate or they've decided to, to use your services, they respect your opinion and they respect your expertise. Right, and that's good, and that's good. Well, um, I know that um, you build web websites and databases, web applications and phone software. You know, all of this sounds, uh, to me, it sounds complicated and expensive. And I know you work with small businesses, so um, how do you make this work for the average small business that maybe doesn't have a lot of money? Yeah, we've had a diverse range of clients from, you know, mm -hmm. small businesses and entrepreneurs who, mm -hmm. you know, I love to work with right. and Fortune 500 companies and federal agencies. Usually it's a, you know, it, it's subjective, it's case by case basis. Mm -hmm. and but it's, that can also be a good thing because it's not like a car. That's an analogy I like to use. Mm -hmm. We can tailor the solution to them. Okay, so yeah. if you've got a small business and uh, they want um, steak, and I mean, you can <laughs> tell that they can't afford that, I mean, how do you go about whittling things down for them? Yeah. And still giving them a good product that will, uh, you know. Well, you hit the nail on the head. I think it is boiling down the what we would call requirements, what needs to be done based on their objectives to what they actually need, mm -hmm. that helps. Okay. Uh, and then you can prioritize um, accordingly. And also if you look at it, you're often looking at what you'll lose if you don't make that investment for that particular thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for instance, many companies would agree that you need a website. Whether that's a simple one or a more advanced, more advanced one, one is right. probably the question. Right, uh, that's but true. you know, it's a different uh, framing of what to get and when. And when to get it, right? Yeah. And uh, can you do things like uh, you know, let's say I want um, <laughs> a twenty thousand uh, dollar design. I can't really afford that today. Can you work out something for me where we can start here and just you know build over a period of time? Yeah, you do things like that? Definitely. Okay. Um, there are options. Technology has only gotten more affordable and the options related mm -hmm. to the things that we're talking about. Right. Um, you might make the decision that you'll go with sort of a, uh, a content management system that you know, has a website sort of you know, rolled into that and choose uh, more of a template right. approach. Ex explain content management for me because okay. I don't know what yeah. that means. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, more and more are finding that people, non-professionals, um, the technology exists mm -hmm. uh, through other services and companies uh, that allows you to edit and change website content. So usually that's what is referred to as a content management system, okay. meaning that just like using your word processing mm -hmm. software, Microsoft Word for instance, you can change your web page. So the system okay. that runs that. Okay, 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 I got it now. Um, you also offer services in the areas of um, accessibility, regulations, and e-business. Now, I've heard of all those terms, but how they, you know, mesh with uh, technology, I don't have a clue. Explain yeah. that to us. Anybody that has run a business or even has filed their taxes, um, you know that there are 
sort of rules to the game. Um, and that's the case for e-commerce and things like collecting payments, uh, holding confidential information, uh, collecting sales tax. Uh, these are all examples of how regulations or policies might come into it that business owners need to be aware of and uh, act accordingly. Um, in the case of, let's say, you're selling a digital product to the federal government, mm -hmm. um, there are Section 508 accessibility guidelines um, that your product has to meet. Uh, oh. That's another example for the vision and hearing impaired, for instance. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're not meeting that, there's somebody out there that knows that that will slap you with a fine or. Uh, do people go to jail well, for violating? Well, let's say I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't say that is uh, what should be on people's minds, but it is a liability. For instance, uh, PCI compliance for collecting or working with credit card information. Mm -hmm. Um, the largest companies spend, spend millions of dollars to, to handle that. Really? Yeah. Um, you and know, so how, it, how is that handled? In the case, well, they have to build the resources, the servers, and, you know, the, the people to work around that subject area. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for instance, the things that companies like PayPal right. handle for people, that's exactly why they exist, because they make it easier. Right. Um, the other example I was thinking uh, was for the federal government. It might not be a fine, but your your application. Let's say I develop something to sell to an agency. If it's not meeting requirements, I might not get a fine, but I won't get their business. They oh, won't. okay. And in certain cases, mm -hmm. <clears throat> companies have to uh, put out in front of the government. You know, let's say in their proposal, how they meet those requirements, even just for the workplace, right? including, uh, let's say, their digital product. Wow, that's very interesting. Kevin, how can our viewers get in contact with you? They can email me. Uh -huh. that, that might be easiest. Okay. Uh, K is in Kevin, B is in boy, H is in Hailstock, at web-immerse.com. Okay. All right, you've heard it. Well, we're going to pause for a short station break, so don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Hello. I have a very special announcement from Rock Your Block. Join Brain Injury Services of Northern Virginia as they host their 10th annual charity golf tournament at the International Country Club located in Fairfax, Virginia on May 20th, 2013. Come and enjoy 18 holes on one of Northern Virginia's premier golf courses, followed by cocktails, dinner, and a live auction, plus multiple prize challenges throughout the day. Funds raised help to provide quality programs and services for nearly 500 adults and 75 children in Northern Virginia with traumatic brain injuries. And don't forget to watch Rock Your Block. Welcome back to Rock Your Block and our special guest, Mr. Kevin Hailstock of Web Immerse, Rockville, Maryland. Kevin, um, as you were uh, explaining about the e-business and the regulations and the accessibility, I thought about something that's kind of funny, but um, I still don't quite know the answer, and maybe you can help me out with it. Before I retired, I had someone from IT uh, come to my desk and say, you're going to have to move over because i got to put you in the cloud. And I actually thought he was flirting with me. I thought about slapping his face. Uh, but I, I, what does that mean? And he just kind of looked at me and, you know, started working. What does that mean? Is that something new? that we've moved into, that we're in the cloud now with the uh, technology? I say a lot more people are concerned with it and looking to it as an mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, really, it refers to virtualizing your information, your data. Uh, for instance, where companies may have uh, hosted all of their um, data in-house in a server in the basement or something like that, mm -hmm. or taking it upon themselves to have their own server farm. Um, they're now using other companies, uh, outsourcing it, having their data located somewhere else, and that would be considered the cloud. Uh, also, for software programs, we're used to having desktop software, like our software is on our box, sitting next to us on the floor, right. on our computer hard drive. Right. Now we have where we are accessing those services uh, virtually loading them from the cloud, which is just uh, you know another term to sort of uh, 
put it another way that you're uh, low, you know, loading virtual right. data. So, well, does that does that mean that um, you don't have to worry about losing your data, or you know, if you go down, or if your computer flips out because somebody else is storing? Is that what it, is somebody else is storing your information? Yeah, and there are other for, benefits to it. Um, really? Yeah, like for uh, the software that I mentioned, that you may be it may be loading from a virtual location from the cloud. Mm -hmm. You know, there are different price points for that. You might be oh, renting okay. software as opposed to having to buy it. Okay. Um, also, it could be safer because you're not hosting it locally. Uh, so if there's a fire in your town or in your building, you, you know, your data is not located, uh, not only located at that. So, but is your data safe uh, in respects of having other people uh, tap into it and, you know, get all your information? There, I there mean, are concerns yeah. with security because it's sort of not by your hip, right. uh, so to speak, not in, only in your premises. and, and but those are addressed well. I mean, it's, it's as good as sort of your money is as good as the bank that it, right. it is That's at. It. So you have to uh, do beyond. your research, your due diligence yeah. on the companies that you are working with. Exactly. On that. Are there a lot of cloud companies that are, um, you know, uh, popping up all over? I would say there are, and there's really? some very large players. Really? Um, choice is not, is not a problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Uh, the other thing I want to ask you, um, for me, when I started out, and I don't even know if you consider this technology, I started out typing on a manual Royal B typewriter <laughs> hundred years ago, as I said earlier. But how have things changed uh, for you? How has this industry changed? Yeah, I like to think of uh, the time that passes, sort of like dog years, when you're talking about internet and web related uh, mm -hmm. things. Um, things change very, very quickly. There's a lot to stay up on. There's a lot that evolves, um, but it's exciting. To some of us, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you think that uh, comparing, uh, to me, it seems like things are changing um, almost moment by moment. I mean, last year, um, I could work my computer fairly well. This year, everything is new. Uh, you get used to one software and all of a sudden that's not being supported anymore. Mm. And you're coming into, like now, uh, I know Windows is coming into, they've already come into Windows 8. Have you had experience with that, any? Windows with that, uh, with that sort of phenomenon yeah, of things yeah. changing moment right, to moment? Right. Yeah, definitely. That's why I call them dog years. You just call them uh, dog years. Yeah, yeah, but you can look at it in, you know, in a positive way as mm -hmm. well, that uh, what you may not have today will be around the corner um, right. pretty soon. Right. Um, but definitely, I, I wouldn't say you're alone in that. <laughs> um, there's one thing that I um, have had um, some real problems with understanding, uh, and I've really tried. And that's this social media um, thing. Can you tell me why businesses really, I mean, why, why I, I'm a person that doesn't believe in that. So, and I do have a business. Tell me why, you know, I need to have a, a, a mindset change. Yeah. I need to change my, as I said, my stinking thinking about, <laughs> <laughs> about social media because it seems like everything now is geared by that, and I, I feel like I'm uh, that I'm lost. Yeah. Help me out here. I do think it's a part of that uh, conversation. It's part of the answer to your earlier question, which is how things have evolved in the industry. Um, websites are a good example, and it leads into the social media. Websites have changed from being like a brochure, or business card online, very mm -hmm. static. Mm -hmm to more interactivity uh, and more of a conversation, which it, social media is probably the best example of, if not one of the biggest causes of that phenomenon. Um, social media is where all the people are. But, wh but why do you need Facebook, LinkedIn, um, what else, uh, tweeting, Twittering? <laughs> yeah. Why do, you, why do you need all, and then who, who ha my thing is who has the time <laughs> to really sit there and respond back to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, the interesting thing is that all of those are focused on different niches, if you will, different audiences, just like oh. businesses all have different audiences and different target consumers. 
Um, that's interesting about all those different properties and mm -hmm. oh, do we need another social network? And the answer is possibly. Um, actually, a trend is to have more sort of uh, niche social networks that really speak to the problem that a specific audience has or a specific desire. Um, but who, who, why should people make the time? I think a great example is how some of the largest companies in the world, you know, well-known, major, major brands, will actually defer to uh, the major social networks. You're kidding. Twitter yeah. and Facebook, for instance. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see a, a, a nationally televised ad. And what do they end the ad with? Yeah. Go to our page at Facebook.com, no matter what the brand is, and then their individual URL on Facebook's account. Now, on the surface, it looks like, well, why are they promoting Facebook? Why are they giving airtime to Twitter and Facebook when they're paying for that ad? It's like they're deferring to the brand. That's where the people are, and that's why social media is important. Well, so you, you mentioned earlier that um, different audiences are attracted, I guess, to different uh, Types of social media. So Facebook, for instance, is that just for the kids, the younger, say 20, down to what, 9 to 20 years old group? Well, they, or is they, that everybody? they pretty much have, uh, they have, uh, with the number of yeah, people that power. are on Facebook, they, they have true. pretty much every audience uh, right. that is on the web so is that and the premier? represented. They, would you say they're the premier? Then the LinkedIn, so I'm, I'm thinking that's more for business. A business uh, audience. Yeah, is that Facebook is definitely the largest. It is yeah. that still really. Yeah, that's amazing. I guess I have to change my thinking <laughs> <laughs> and get in the group. Um, do you conduct classes for those who are, let's shall we say, technically challenged, like <laughs> myself? <laughs> what do you do? I'll what would you do for somebody like me who has a bad credit. attitude about? Uh, technology and I would we probably be the classes. one sitting in, in the front row just glaring at you. <laughs> well hopefully not but yes we do offer classes. You do and so what do you what, what do you do how what do you start out with wherever the person? Well it, it totally it's totally subjective it depends on the organization or the individual mm -hmm. what they want to learn about but in our in our primary focus areas. We so you would classes. go to an organization and actually teach on a particular uh, area. Yeah, and you it might even be helped with a particular language, programming language that mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. or just the work that they're doing, or even help with their workflow related to any of the areas that we uh, develop in. Right. What about uh, globally? Have you done any uh, global projects that you can speak of, or yeah. is, it, is it top secret? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, um, based on the nature of our work, we have a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, we have clients that we have never even met. Uh, we've deployed in countries I haven't been to. Um, uh, All done over other on continents. We are we have developers and team members in at least ten different countries. And you um, never have to leave the United States to well, work with I'd like with them. to, but, right. uh, but you don't no, have we to. don't have to. We don't wow, have to. that is um, that's unique. The other thing I I know that you are um, minority certified. So that's is that eight A uh, certified. How hard is that? Because I've, I've heard uh, several different stories about that, and some people have just thrown up their hands and given up. Is yeah, it something kind of difficult? There are consultants that make a good living taking care of that for companies. Oh, so um, you're saying that a person doesn't have to fill out that 200 page. They can definitely get assistance. They can get assistance um, on that. Arguably, they can even get assistance from the organizations that have those certifications as well. Um, I filled ours out for the 8A certification personally. Um, thankfully, it was right after the point that it went online, mm -hmm. um, one of the first few years. Right. I think it has gotten easier since then, and they've had some practice with it. Um, but there are other uh, companies, consultants, that help with the process. What are two or three advantages of being uh, 8A certified for Minority or yeah, in the particular example of the 8A certification, it qualifies you for certain set asides for uh, government purchasing, mm -hmm. you know, procurement of mm -hmm. uh, goods or services. Uh, so it can definitely be an advantage. Wow. Okay. It uh, definitely depends on the effort that you put in mm -hmm. uh, your business development, mm -hmm. but uh, it can definitely be a good advantage for a small business. 
Kevin, we, we're almost out of time, but I would ask you, what advice uh, could you give someone who was interested in developing or putting together a web-based business similar to what you have? Get a good company or consultant or find access to great information to begin thinking through the process. Right. Well, I, well you heard it, folks. Kevin, I want to thank you so much thank you. for sharing with us today. Uh, folks, whether we like it or not, social media, web-based technology, and telecommunications is here to stay. I'm one of those people who has refused to fully embrace technology, all to my own hurt. After today's show and Kevin's straight talk, <laughs> I'm going to change my attitude about technology and get with the program. For those of you who have been stubborn like me, I hope that you will consider making that change as well. Kevin, we look forward to having you visit with us again. And I want to thank you guys for watching Rock Your Block. Bye-bye.